This is pre-AP, pre-calculus. Free response practice number 43, calculator permitted. Suppose that theta is an angle in standard position such that sine of theta is 12 thirteenths and cosine of theta is less than zero. Let's just stop with that right there. Sine, as we know, is y over r. So that means that y has to be 13, r has to be 13. If y is 12, a positive 12, it has to be in quadrant 1 or 2. It's above the x-axis. Then this says cosine of theta is less than 0, which means x is less than 0. So if y is positive and x is negative, that's got to be in quadrant 3. Question A. In which quadrant does the terminal side of theta lie? The terminal side of theta lies in quadrant 3. Explain your reasoning. Well, since sine of theta is greater than 0 and cosine of theta is less than 0, this, I'm sorry, this can't be in quadrant 3. That's ludicrous. Has to be in quadrant 2. Because in quadrant 2, x is negative and y is positive. Since sine of theta is greater than 0 and cosine of theta is less than 0, this implies that y is positive and x is negative. Quadrant 2 has negative for x and positive for y. I think that more than explains it. Part B, in which quadrant is the terminal side of gamma lie? I think that's a gamma. Completely explain your reasoning. So the second sentence, additionally, gamma is a different angle in a standard position such that secant of gamma is negative 5 thirds. If secant of theta or gamma is negative, that means that x is negative. Sine of gamma is less than 0. That means that y is negative. Quadrant 3 is the quadrant in which those are both negative. So the terminal side of gamma lies in quadrant 3. And this is because since secant of gamma is negative, then x is negative. I'm saying the same thing I did for the previous one, just saying it in a different way. Since sine of gamma is negative, then that means that y is negative. In quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. Good enough. Part C, draw and completely label the reference triangles for both theta and gamma. So I believe we said that theta was in quadrant 2. The terminal side falls in quadrant 2. And we said that gamma was in quadrant 3, meaning the terminal side is in quadrant 3. So what else did we know? We knew that sine of theta was 12 thirteenths. So sine of theta is 12 over 13. That means the r value is 13. The x value is 12. And for gamma, we had secant of gamma was negative 5 thirds. 
that means that r is this negative we got to be careful this negative is written can be written in lots of places well let me just explain this could be a negative 5 over 3 or a 5 over negative 3 or a negative 5 thirds specifically this is the one that really is true because we have a negative x value r is always positive I recognize right away this is a Pythagorean triple this is a 3 4 5 the y value being negative is the first triangle Pythagorean triple the one that has theta in it 13 squared is 169 1 or 12 squared is 144 169 minus 144 that's 25 this is also Pythagorean triple which is negative 5. So this is a PT Pythagorean triple um, that consists of a 5, 12, 13 triangle. This is a Pythagorean triple that consists of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. The instructions draw and completely label the reference triangles for both theta and gamma. And the other thing I guess we could do to completely label is say these are x, y, and r values. Oops, that's a Y, not an X. Good enough. Let's go to D. Which of the following, sine of theta plus gamma or cosine of theta minus gamma, has a greater value? Show your work. Before I do that, I'm just going to write down what each of these things are and then transfer it to this side of the page. So if sine of theta is 12 thirteenths, Cosine of theta is negative 5 thirteenths. And if secant of gamma is negative 5 thirds, then that makes cosine of gamma negative 3 fifths. My handwriting is leaves much to be desired. And that makes sine of gamma negative four-fifths. I'm just going to transfer this information down here so I can see this more clearly. It's for reference. Sine of theta plus gamma is going to be equal to, this is the sum identity for sine, sine of theta times cosine of gamma plus sine of gamma times cosine of theta. And I've said this a billion times, but you could switch the order of these two if you wanted. doesn't really make a difference. Now we know what sine of theta is. It's 12 thirteenths. We know what cosine of gamma is. It is negative 3 fifths. We know what sine of gamma is. It's negative 4 fifths. And we know that cosine of theta is negative 5 thirteenths. We're going to get a negative 36 over 65 plus 20 over 65. Assuming that I can add and subtract correctly, I get negative 16 65ths. Let's check real quick to make sure I added that stuff right. Yep. Looking good. Looking real good. Now, let's try to figure out what cosine of theta minus gamma is. Using the difference identity for this, that's going to be cosine of theta times cosine of gamma plus sine of theta sine of gamma. Cosine of theta we have is negative 5 thirteenths. Cosine of gamma is negative 3 fifths plus. Sine of theta is 12 thirteenths. And sine of gamma is negative 4 fifths. It's going to give us 15 over 65 plus a negative 48 over 65 
that's going to give us a negative 33 over 65. So we were supposed to compare these two. Which one has a greater value? Well, this one's greater. So cosine of theta minus gamma is less than sine of theta minus gamma. Answer. All the works above it. That concludes this, these problems. Uh, make sure that you're checking out the rubric to make sure that you are doing this stuff correctly.